Welcome to a video on electromagnetic induction and magnetic flux. In this video, I will be reviewing some uh, concepts that we've already seen a little bit. Um, we'll talk about current induced in a wire or a coil um, moving through a magnetic field and the what actually magnetic flux is. So without further ado, I will begin and start this awesome lecture and you can follow along in your notebook or, and take notes. And there's also supplementary uh, readings in the textbook, which is always a good place to go if you have questions. So let's begin. I'm looking at the definition of induce right now, and there's a couple of different versions here. It's a, it's a verb, and you can have past tense, present tense, etc. But to induce is to lead or move as to a course of action by influence or persuasion. It doesn't really pertain too much to us. The second definition is to bring about or stimulate the occurrence of. And this is really more of what we're concerned about is a changing magnetic field or a wire moving in a magnetic field will have an induced, will stimulate the occurrence of a current in the wire. This is because the magnetic field apply, applies a force on the charges within the wire um, and when it's changing and when, or when it's moving and because it gives it the due to the velocity the relative velocity between the two and this um, causes a potential difference this potential difference is an emf an electromotive force which is analogous to voltage and this difference um, along with that of uh, this potential difference voltage or emf along with whatever resistance is within the wire or circuit or whatever it may be, creates a current. So this is the idea here that we have a changing magnetic field induces a current. The big idea here is that if you have a magnet and it's moving near a loop of wire or a circuit, something along that, you're going to create an EMF in there, and which is therefore going to create some current. Now, uh, it depends on how fast the magnetic field is changing, so how fast you're moving the magnet back and forth. Um, and it also depends on the strength of the magnet itself, or the strength of the magnetic field is moving more, uh, is, it, is a better way of saying this. Now, this here is if we have a changing magnet, or a changing magnetic field moving through there. Now, if you move a wire, as we saw through uh, the video from Khan Academy, uh, through a magnetic field, you're going to produce a current within that wire. That's because of the uh, force on a charge due to um, a magnetic field. So a moving wire through a magnetic field or a changing magnetic uh, field near a loop of wire or near a circuit will create a current moving through the wire. Here's a little bit more of a review on this idea of an EMF being produced within a wire. So when you move um, some a bar or a wire through a magnetic field, following the right-hand rule, a current is produced. So in this picture here, we have the velocity going to the right. The magnetic field is going into the page. So there you can start to set up your um, fingers in the correct order. So velocity to the right, magnetic field into the page, and the current, the force, is upward. So keep in mind that we always measure current as flowing from positive to negative. So it's the movement of the positive charges in, within a wire. Is that the idea kind of within that? So the EMF produced is uh, depends on the magnetic field, the length of the wire within the magnetic field. Keep in that. I'll keep an eye. Uh, make sure you uh, pay attention to that and the speed that you're moving it on. Um, now from this, this uh, current. The current actually depends on the EMF and the resistance of the, whatever you have within that circuit. So EMF is analogous to the voltage produced by a battery. Magnetic flux is the amount of the magnetic field passing through some area. Or in, in this case, it's a loop is what we're really going to be concerned with, so well, some loop of wire. And the, really the idea here is is how much magnetic field or how much field lines are passing through that area. And the way that we calculate this is the strength of the magnetic field multiplied by the area times the cosine of this angle. Now the angle 
is um, even though it's written as a theta here, it's sometimes ri it's written on your formula sheet as a phi, uh, phi, excuse me, phi, and it is the angle between the normal of the surface, the area, so the, you have some loop, the normal comes out perpendicular. It's the angle between that normal and the magnetic field line. So if the angle is zero, that means the normal is directly along the magnetic field line, and that means this uh, area, this loop is kind of is perpendicular, as we'll see in the next slide, to the magnetic field. And if the angle is 90, then that's cosine of, that means the cosine of 90 is zero. And the area, the, the area that we're concerned with is moving um, uh, parallel to the, it's direct and parallel to the magnetic field, and so there's going to be no flux through it. So magnetic flux, the amount of field passing through a loop of wire. Measured in Weber, WB, one Weber is one Tesla times a meter squared. So here's a visual representation of what I was talking about with the angle. So in the first, all the way to the left side down here, we have the coil, and that's this bar. Uh, the normal is that dotted line coming out in front of it. It's perpendicular to the surface. The angle, phi, that it makes with the magnetic field is zero. So we have this maximum amount of magnetic field moving through this area. The second one, the one in the middle, it's at the normal is at 60 degrees to the magnetic field line. So that's how it's oriented with respect to the magnetic field lines. Um, we can see the normal coming out. We see the magnetic field going straight down. So this year we'd have a uh, cosine of 60 degrees times the area times the magnetic field strength. And then finally we have the normal of the surface. This is on the far right. is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And that way there's no magnetic field moving through the coil. So there's going to be no magnetic flux. All right. One question on motional EMS. So using the diagram to the right, so we have a bar moving through a magnetic field at some velocity, and there's a, a current induced in it, following the right-hand rule. Um, and because there's that current induced in it, there's also going to be a force applied against it. So that's going to be the second part of this question. Um, so what I'd like you to do is calculate the current induced in this wire and assume that the wires have a resistivity of, a, of zero, but we're only concerned with the resistance of the light bulb in this circuit. Um, calculate the current produced um, within this circuit based on the fact that the wire bar is being pushed at 5 meters per second. The bar itself is 0.75 meters long. Magnetic field has a strength of 2.8 Teslas, and the light bulb has a resistance of 96 ohms. So there's that. Um, make sure, I mean, if you need, if you're going to go through, look at your test book. There is uh, some help in there. So there's your first question. There's another question coming up in a second. All right, question number two. A 10 centimeter diameter loop, 10 centimeter diameter, just want to point that out, is rotating in a uniform 0.5 Tesla magnetic field. What is the magnetic flux through the loop when the angle, when the loop, excuse me, is at an angle of 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, or 90 degrees? And keep in mind, this is with respect to the magnetic field. So once again, please put these uh, answers in online and come to class, class on Thursday or next day uh, with any questions. Thank you very much.